So distribution is the process of uh, transmitting the product from the producer to the customer. So all of the steps that get the product moved from our factory to the final customer is distribution. So the complicated thing about international distribution is that every country has a different kind of system for distribution. Some countries is quite complicated, some countries is more simple, different countries have different laws, okay, different roles of middlemen. Do you understand middlemen? Middle, well they should really say middle person. People in between. more than one. So we have the producer, customer. So there are two extremes in distribution. One extreme is producer forgets about it. Here, producer sells to trading company. This is the traditional one from maybe hundreds of years ago. If we think of Japan, right? Japan had a lot of trading companies in China. Right? So it means that the Japanese company would produce something like soap or clothes and they would sell that to the trading company in Japan. Okay? And then the trading company would export and deliver to the customer in China they would have an office in Hong Kong or an office in somewhere else. Okay? So number one, just sell to the trading company from here. Number two, the other extreme is we have our own distribution channel. We own all our own trucks and offices. Okay? We own everything and distribute directly to the customer. Okay, so we own all the steps along the way. In the foreign country, we have offices and those things. So distribution channels is somewhere between those two extremes. That's kind of what we're talking about. Why is the, okay. So distribution is important to get your product into a country. It can be a reason why people can't sell their product. I have a friend whose family has a big beef farm in Mexico, but he couldn't. He wanted to sell the beef in China, but the reason he couldn't sell it, he couldn't f find a way to distribute the beef in China. He couldn't get into the distribution channel. Asia, Japan, Korea maybe has a more complicated distribution channel than the other countries. It's hard for companies to operate in. So if we want to get a competitive advantage in distribution, we have to have aggressive distribution, so it means that we are entering and doing it reliable. We don't break or damage the packaging or damage the product. And efficient, it costs less time and less money. That's how we, we can have an advantage over other companies in the distribution. So we're going to talk about the structures, the different structures that we can channel. Do you understand channel? like river, the different pattern of distribution, and the middlemen, how to make a decision. So these are the kind of steps we have. Uh, physical handling and distribution of goods. So at the producer, somebody has to handle the goods, put the goods from the conveyor belt into the truck. Okay? The ownership, we need to transfer the documents. Here, I need to transfer the document to the trading company. Then, the trading company needs to transfer the document to the customer. Okay? Negotiations between the middle people. Uh, then, negotiations between the middle people and the customers. So every, as we said, every country has a different structure based on history. If we look at some countries which were colonies and very dependent very dependent on the outside world, right, for imports. A lot of them have this kind of one, closer to number one, where they have an importer. The importer in the country buys all the products, 
Okay, so if we think of India as a colony of Britain, right? Then there's some importer in India. Do you understand the importer? And they buy all the, let's say Britain is selling clothes. They buy all the clothes from Britain. And the British company sells to the importer in India. And then the importer sells to the different shops and warehouses around India. Okay. So every country has more of a different structure. So this is the importer one, so-called traditional, maybe in the old days, uh, where we had the ships and not so good communications, right? Companies just, producer just takes it to the country, right? And then leaves it with the importer and forgets it goes home. Okay, my job is done. I sold my goods to the importer. The importer is going to look after everything after that, okay? Uh, getting the, to the consumer. So in this case, the market system is around the philosophy of selling a limited supply of goods at high prices to a small number of affluent customers. The car business often uses this one, okay? So in Ireland, these importers, they do like an auction, to understand an auction, and the importers pay for the license to buy from the producer, like Kia, say in Ireland, I want to sell a Kia car. So I go to the auction and try to get the license for selling Kia cars in Ireland. And then I become the official importer in Ireland for selling the Kia cars, okay? So I uh, pay for the license and then I pay Kia for all the cars and then I'm responsible for selling the cars. So guess what I'm going to do? I have a limited supply of goods. Am I going to charge? I'm going to decide the price, right? I'm the importer, do you understand? Ireland is a small country. People don't have much choice. So actually, because of that reason, the car prices in Ireland is 20% higher than the UK or Europe, or 30% higher, okay? Because we also had some collusion problem. Even the guy from Kia, the guy from Toyota, the guy from Ford got together in a hotel and they decided to make minimum price for certain cars, right? So they got caught and they were fined, right? Punished for doing that. But you get the idea, right? The importer can decide the price in this case and they can also limit. So maybe I want to make a buzz about some new Kia Jeep. So I say, oh, there's a waiting list, right? Do you ever see the, the nightclub or disco? Outside the disco? Maybe, I don't know, nightclub might have a different meaning in Korean, Konglish, but in English, nightclub just means disco. Do you understand disco or club for dancing, right? So often outside the club, the club may be empty inside, but they still have a queue of people outside. Why do they have a queue of people outside? They have a few people outside, and, but they don't let all the people in. They have a queue outside. Why? Face control. No? Face, face control. Hmm? Face control. Face control. <laughs> face control. What's face control? <laughs> when they're checking for the IDs no, no, no. and other... <laughs> <laughs> no reason. They're just keeping them waiting in queue. They, they also, them. some dentists or doctors, they ask their friends to come when they just start their practice, they ask their friends to come and sit in their office and wait. Why do they want people to wait like that? Make people wait like that? Yes, right? If it looks like it's limited and you have to wait and people are waiting and queuing, the product looks better, right? So people say, oh look, there's a queue outside the club, it must be very good. Those people are waiting to get in, right? Or at the doctor's place. Oh, there are a lot of people waiting to see the doctor. Must be a really good doctor. Okay? So the same thing, they can control, the importer can control, right? They will say, oh, we have this new Kia Jeep, but we only have 100, right? And everybody, oh, I want to buy one. Okay? So, okay, don't worry, I'll put you on the waiting list. You have to wait for one month. Oh, it's worth it, it's worth the wait for one month, right? <laughs> so the importer is just controlling. And then the people tell their friend, oh, I have to wait one month to get the Kia, new Kia Jeep. And they want the Kia Jeep too. Okay? We can see that with the launch of different products as well. When they launch, they 
they like to have on the news, publicity, right? People was fighting over the new iPhone, right? Outside the shop, because there's not enough of them. It makes the news, right? So it looks good. So in this case, importer can do that kind of thing. So they want a situation, the importer wants a situation where the demand is higher than the supply, and they can charge the higher price. Okay, the customer just has a limited number of middlemen, the distribution system is local, uh, we have some more developing or emerging economies usually fit this kind of model more, okay? or, do, or just some certain industry. So uh, Japan, for example, Japan has a very specific distribution structure. This is uh, like my friend in China, it's a non-tariff barrier to entry for many companies. Do you understand non-tariff barrier to entry? Even if they make the FTA, it's not easy for the foreign company to come in and sell things because of the distribution system. They have four distinguishing features. They have a high density of middlemen. So here, between the producer and the customer, a lot of middlemen, okay? Uh, the channel is controlled by the manufacturers. They have a business philosophy shaped by culture, which means that people is very loyal. They're very loyal, so they, even though there are a lot of middle men, and probably they could cut out this middleman, because of the loyalty, they've been dealing with this middleman for the long time, they don't cut them out, okay? They continue to use them. And then, you try to sell in Japan, you try to sell your product directly to this middleman, okay? But because of the culture, they don't know you. They don't have a long-term relationship with you. So they're going to say, no, I'm not buying your product. I'm not accepting your product. Okay? I only accept from this guy, right? Or the same thing just for products. Even if it was just one middle man, they don't know your company. They don't do business with your company, okay? So they prefer the company that they know and they've been doing business with for a long time. So you say, oh, but I have a better product and it's cheaper. You can sell it more easily. But they say, no, sorry, I'm loyal. Do you understand loyal? Yeah. So they have that, that kind of culture. And they have this retail store law. So in the US, they have the big stores like Walmart and hypermarkets. So you've been, who's been to the US or Canada? Hands up, who has been to the US or Canada? Hmm? What do you think about, do they have very big malls and supermarkets and stores? Do they have a lot of small little retail stores or big malls? Big malls, right? Like Walmart, that kind of thing. Okay, did you go there? Yes, what is it like? They have a lot of different products. Yes, right, so they have a lot of different brands in the same store. So if I get my product into Walmart, right? It's going to be sold all over the US. Do you understand? But in Japan, they don't have that kind of system. They have a lot of small retail stores, not the big stores. So you can't just sell to Walmart and that's it, finished, right? You have to deal with a lot of smaller stores, with a lot of middlemen. So it's more, comp do you understand, more complicated system? It's the same in Italy. And one of the reasons is the law. So in Italy, they have the law. I want to start a new store in Italy, okay? I have to get the permission of all of the local business people to start a new store. So that's quite a big barrier to entry because uh, US companies, they try to set up in the Italian town, like Walmart tries to set up in the Italian town, right? Do you think the Italian business, local business owners are going to agree to have Walmart in their town? No, why not? Yes, they're going, to, they're going to destroy the small stores, right? So of course the local business owners don't allow them. So it's similar in Japan, they have this kind of law protecting the small stores. So that's one of the reasons why they have the more complicated distribution structure. Uh, in Italy, they have like so many just small stores instead of big stores, independent small stores. But people like that too when they go on holidays for shopping. For the, they have some very spe specific fashion and boutiques, that kind of thing, right? So, 
Uh, in Japan, it's not unusual for the consumer goods to go through three or four intermediates before reaching the consumer. So, for example, Japan has uh, a large number of independent grocery and bakers, and small stores account for 59.1% of retail food sales. Okay. On the other hand, in the US, the emphasis is on supermarkets, discount food stores, and department stores. Small stores generate 35.7% of food sales. So even I change my habit in Korea, I usually go to the local smaller latte mark just to buy fruit and vegetables and those kind of things, it's convenient. But in Ireland, people always go like 10 kilometers, right, to buy from the large, drive 10 kilometers to buy from the large uh, supermarket because it's much cheaper. <coughs> so, the next part is the control. How much control do we have of the channel? So we're going to talk about these points. So we have inventory financing. Oh, actually, sorry, this we'll talk about a little bit later. Or oh, sorry, no, it's okay. Inventory financing means that uh, we are. Do you understand inventory stock? So it means that the middleman in Japan they provide credit for the inventory. So, for example. Uh, I'm the shop, I'm the shop, right? I don't have any cash, no cash, okay? But the middleman will say, don't worry, you don't have to pay me cash now, okay? You can pay me after three months. They give the credit to the store. And then, but the middleman pays the producer. So the producer gets their money from the middleman, and the middleman gives the credit to the shop. Do you understand that idea? So that's, the middleman is helping to have some control in Japan. Uh, they help with the rebate, so the shop wants their money back, they couldn't sell the product. The middleman immediately gives them back the money. Okay, and then later apply for the money from the producer. Same for returns, and also promotional support. They give, the middleman will give them some posters and other types of things. So by doing that, kind of thing, the middleman is getting control over the shops. So you go to the shop in Japan and you try to sell your product, right? Or my friend goes to China and he tries to sell his beef. Oh, this is good beef, right? Why don't you buy my beef? So we can understand that the middlemen may have some control over them because they owe them money, right? They already gave them the credit. Okay, they give them all their help. They allow them to have the returns easily. So the middlemen are giving that kind of benefit. So the shop might say to you, no, maybe your product is better but I, and cheaper, but it doesn't matter, right? I get these benefits from the middleman, so I'm not going to accept your product. So we talked about in Japan, loyalty, harmony, and friendship. In Korea, do you have a similar philosophy? Loyalty, harmony, and friendship? China, are those things important? Harmony, is harmony important? Not much. In Tai Chi, is harmony important? Tai Chi. Don't know what Tai Chi is. Is an ancient Korean, uh, like Chinese, like religion and martial art. Like mixed together. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> is that the harmony is important? Right? Mm. So, in, in your group work, which is more important? To have a harmony or a good performance? Mm? <laughs> Maybe in the Western country they don't care about harmony at all, right? They just fight. They think maybe fighting and comp competing is better, right? If people are, they think if people are too comfortable, they're not performing to their ability, right? But maybe in the, in the Eastern culture, harmony is more important, right? 
we have the harmony, everybody feels happy with each other, then we can perform better. Which idea is better? Hmm? None of them are better, right? They're just different, different ideas. Both of them can work in different things. Just we need to understand. So in Japan, they like that kind of thing. It means that they want a long-term dealer-supplier relationship. Okay, so that's why the cost of Japanese consumer goods are among the highest in the world. There's not enough price competition. Because I come in with my new product that's better and cheaper, and the shop says, no, I don't want your product. Okay, I'm just dealing with this middleman. He sells me this bad product, which is expensive. I'm going to sell that for him. And we said that Japanese law helps the small retailer. And Japanese consumers are quite fussy. They like service over price and are loyal to the brands. That's also a very different thing in Korea to Ireland. Irish people don't care about the service. Okay? They just worry about the performance. There's an airline in uh, Ireland called Ryanair. And it's the really cheapest airline in Europe. And all they care about is they get the people there on time with their luggage safely. Right? And they're famous because their service is really bad. Okay? <laughs> so if you look at my face, you can understand the service on the Irish airline, right? <laughs> Somebody has a problem, they just tell them, it doesn't matter, it's alright. Right? <laughs> or they just tell them, no, you can't do that. Somebody says, I want to change my thing or change that. They say, what? No! <laughs> No, you can't do that. Why? No. Flight is cheap. It's cheap. What else do you want? Right? What more do you want? Right? So they made that kind. Of, they're changing a little bit now because they already got a lot of customers. But we can see the different culture, right? Irish people don't care about the service. If the people is grumpy and do that, the Irish customer doesn't care, right? They say, oh, they're right. I'm being too fussy. Why am I being so fussy? Right? They're really cheap and they get me there on time, right? So <coughs> that airline is quite successful in Europe now. So if you go to Europe, you can fly from Spain to England for just 50 euros or that kind of price with that kind of airline. So it actually grew a lot because in the end, it gets the people there and has good performance, even if the service is not that good, right? But in Asian culture, in Korea, service is very important. Right? You guys like nice service? Yes? Will you change your mind about a product because the service is not good? Or you won't go somewhere because the service is not good? Yes? So, when I came to Korea, I was shocked at the service. Very incredible, incredible service. Why are people being smiling and being nice to me? <laughs> right? Why? I don't understand. Oh, that's great. Right? Even at the supermarket, some person that dials down when you come into the supermarket, right? So it's very interesting, uh, the service. So in Japan it's the same. So we have that kind of loyalty and uh, service is important. Then it's harder to break into the market. And I suppose for Korean or Japanese companies who go to the other countries, they have to think that it's good to have good service, but maybe the other countries don't value, don't appreciate. Do you understand don't appreciate? Don't appreciate as much the service. So we talked about this, uh, the law. So the local government have to approve the stores. And the local retailers have to agree. So Toys R Us, a uh, big US store, it took three years. To, and to get a store in Japan, anywhere in Japan. Couldn't find a store anywhere in Japan, okay? Uh, so they're starting to relax it a little bit. So we have these other different channel structures, uh, like hypermarkets. We talked about hypermarkets, just we get our uh, product into the market, and we, like Walmart or Costco, then that's almost like a global company, so it's going to help us, okay? Uh, we have e-commerce uh, for business to business and business to customer. Uh, we just talked about Amazon. Alibaba is uh, the 
business to business one, right? You mentioned Alibaba. Uh, future oil supplies is a question because maybe the that's going to affect the channel structures because currently a lot of the channel structure is we have a big warehouse in the country and then the people all go out from the warehouse, okay? But if the oil price gets very expensive, then we can't afford to do that. They may need to make change to make a lot of smaller, instead of one big warehouse, a lot of smaller warehouses, closer to the customers, and then just deliver out from the smaller warehouse. Okay. So we have those kind of uh, changes too in the channels. So we have to think about the size of the uh, stores in the different countries. In Italy, we have one store for every 63 people. So a lot of small stores. In the US, one store for every 322 uh, people. In Italy, stores are small and specialized. So discuss with your partner. You want to sell your goods in Italy. It seems easier in the US, right? They have much less stores. So let's say you're selling some fashion, some shoes. Probably you wouldn't be selling shoes from Korea to Italy, right? Italy would be selling shoes from Italy to Korea. Well, let's just say that you're selling shoes to Italy from Korea. You're very optimistic, <laughs> right? So discuss with your partner. How are you going to reach all the small retailers to get them to sell your products in Italy? Discussing about that, I'm going to call the roll. So, Sin Sung Min, Kim Yee Ran, Ernest, Afran, Yee Ha Won, Kim Bong Suk, Kim Wei Min, they are at the military service, Lock Eyes today, Chui Jin Yang, Ha San Yang, Kim Yu Jang, Kim Tae Kyu, already, why aren't you at the military service? You didn't do your military, yes. Pak Jinu, An Ho Wan, Wan Yuan Chi, Kim Da Kyung, Ha Hee Woo, Go Sun Yi, Yi Yong Min, Moon Ju Wan, Han So Yang, Kim Ah Rong, Kim Yoo Na, Park Jun Won, did it do military service yet? Yi Mi Rong, how long do you have left? Jung Yang Hee, Jung Hee Jae, Kim Sang Hee, Choi Tae Min, or Yang Yoo Sun, Cho Ah, Im Mong Woo, so, uh, Kim Ye Ran, yes. what are you going to do? It's your job to sell the shoes in Italy. There are a lot of small stores. How are you going to reach them?
Yes, right? That's what you're going to have to do, right? You're going to have to drive around Italy, rent a car. Maybe, maybe you'd enjoy that, right? <laughs> Would you like to drive around Italy? Sally shoes? <laughs> what? Yes, <laughs> Problem is, maybe you might be able to sell much shoes to the Italians, right? They are going to make it. You could sell something else, right? So that's the problem with the small retailers, right? We have to go around and demonstrate and ask, can I have some of your time? Some people might say, no, I'm not interested, whatever, okay? So it's going to take, a, you can understand the cost and the time is more to break into the market there, okay? Like traveling salesperson is more important. So uh, we have to adapt to each country. For example, in emerging economies, they have small stores, small inventory, we, have to, we can adapt our product. We don't sell the 20 cigarettes. They have a very small store. The stores don't have much money to buy a big inventory. Just, and the customers don't have much money. So we just sell them single cigarettes. We make a different strategy in that country. We can do direct marketing. For example, the US companies in Japan, they want to get rid of all this past this system, right? They just send out the catalog to the house understand catalog marketing do you ever buy anything from a catalog they send you a catalog when I was working before in Ireland I used to get often for especially for clothes we had to order some clothes for the some kids right and they would send the catalog of the all of the clothes so it's, you could also send a catalog to the Italian retailers do you understand catalog it's like a little book with all your products and the pro information and the prices Okay. So that's another way we can try. Other direct marketing we saw in L'Oreal in Brazil. Okay. Just go to the house, door to door sales. Like in Italy, door to door going to the different stores, right? Door to door sales may work well sometimes. Direct marketing may work well. As trying to approach, they try to, L'Oreal tried to approach the hair saloons and the hairdressers. Okay. So they tried to find a different way. Uh, to get into those uh, countries, which is not easy to get into. So then that's all we have time for today. Do you have any question about what we studied so far about the distribution channel? Do you think the girls should do the military service too? <laughs> hmm? Why not? Okay. Thank you.